angina commonly known is angina pectoris what is angina pectoris it is a latin derived terminology which means the severe type of pain in the chest angina stands for the pain and pectoris stands for the chest so the severe type of pain observed in the chest that may radiate then into the neck into the jaw or uh, towards the arm and the beak so this pain is actually called as angina pectoris or simply angina why this pain arises what is the reason behind the reason behind is atherosclerosis and what is atherosclerosis it is actually the formation of the plaque of cholesterol inside the blood vessels so the blood vessels supplying the blood to the heart known as coronary arteries in these arteries the plaque formation takes place and this plaque is actually reducing the blood flow to the specific part of the heart so when there is decreased blood supply to the specific part of the heart so automatically we can see that there is decreased supply of the oxygen when the oxygen supply decreases actually the part of the body starts doing pain the same is the case with the heart then that pain is actually known as angina pectoris and uh, we have uh, three types or three categories pharmacologically physiologically and pathologically what are those three types of pain or anginas the very first one is called is stable angina and the second one is called or is known as unstable and the third one is given three names vasospastic prince metal uh, variant angina you can also call it as a rest angina so what is the stable angina this is also known as exertion angina or exercise induced angina when a person does exercise during the exercise so this pain will start and then it will aggravate so what to do then a person has to take rest from the exercise or uh, if a person takes natural glycine etc then that uh, chest pain may be a kind of alleviated or relieved the next one we have that is a uh, unstable angina unstable angina is different from the stable angina in case of the disruption of atherosclerosis in that we hear just only atherosclerosis in the unstable angina we have atherosclerosis with the atherosclerosis disruption happens this atherosclerotic plaque might break or might dislodge and might move to some other coronary arteries might block other arteries so like this what will happen again so if they are blocking the blood vessels so like this they are decreasing the supply of oxygen to that part of the heart and uh, we will feel the pain so then that pain is given the name is unstable pain or unstable angina and this type of the angina needs the hospitalization because it's really a uh, severe and different type of the next one we have that is vasospastic angina prince metal angina rest angina or variant angina so this these all terms come under the single type that is the third one so i would uh, explain this type by the vasospastic angina because this term is helping us to explain this type of angina vasospastic term stands for the vaso and spastic two terms are there actually so vaso means blood vessels and spastic means constriction so when these blood vessels constrict what will happen the blood supply will be decreased oxygen will be decreased so like this again painful sensations will arise so now these painful sensations are due to the spasticity of the blood vessels or you can say the contraction of the blood vessels so this is called as then vasospastic prince metal or rest or variant angina so what is the logic behind this type of angina you know the plaque this plaque sometimes starts accumulating uh, and then it will call the platelets and you know that platelets they will release thromboxin a2 and uh, this thromboxin a2 has got a very important function in case of contraction so this thromboxin a2 is actually contracting the blood vessels and somehow the endothelin are also released so thromboxin a2 and endothelin they both cause the contraction of the blood vessel due to which the blood supply will be decreased to the specific part of the heart and you know if oxygen is not reaching that particular path so then the painful sensations will arise so that's actually we put that sensation or that pain in the category of this angina coming towards the pharmacology of angina the very first uh, statement that will help us explaining these pharmacological drugs that is the diastole means that cardiac muscles receive blood during the diastole this is the particular sentence and statement that is actually helping us to understand the pharmacology so what is this particular term telling us some about 
so the heart receives the blood when it is in the diastolic condition so what we are supposed to do is that go for those medications that will help us to have a diastolic time so you can say we will go for those drugs those pharmacological steps which will help us increase the diastole so which when we increase the diastole the muscles will receive the blood so we have the following uh, pharmacology through which we can treat or through which we can get the time for the diastole and like this uh, the angina may be relieved so the very first one is the beta blockers second one is calcium channel blockers third one is nitrates and the fourth one is sodium channel blockers so what beta blockers they do they are actually decreasing the heart rate you know sympathetic nervous system has a supply on the uh, san av and uh, complete heart so when we decrease the sympathetic supply what will we do so we are actually uh, decreasing the contraction and decreasing the heart rate so when the sen is not receiving the sympathetic nervous supply so like this the sinoatrial node will not fire time in again or you can see we will just decrease the firing time of the sinoatrial node so like this what will happen we will decrease the heart rate and we will decrease the contraction of the ventricles so like this we are actually getting a time that is the diastolic time suppose before the sinoatrial node was firing three times or five times because of now beta blockers the sinoatrial node will fire one time so like this we got a delay in the firing in a nutshell you can say that we got diastole so in the diastole what will happen the cardiac muscles will receive the blood and uh, will receive the oxygen then the pain will be relieved and uh, next one we have calcium channel blockers now what is the function of calcium channel blockers you know the calcium channel has got uh, two major roles in the heart rate and in the contraction again so if you remember about the sinoatrial node in which uh, the calcium played a very important role in the depolarization so if we block the calcium channels then what will happen depolarization will be delayed so delayed depolarization means delay of the firing of the sinoatrial node so the sinoatrial node will then send the impulses lately so before again it was sending five now it will send one because we have blocked the calcium channels so like this we will actually get the systole and diastole gave you can see that diastole is achieved so a longer time is achieved for the diastole and we need diastole because the cardiac muscles receive blood during the diastole so now again if the blood is received the pain is relieved and uh, the next case it is helping us is that it is reducing the contraction of the ventricle myosin they need again the calcium to do the contraction when we are blocking the calcium channels so like this what will happen then the contraction will reduce so like this it will decrease the heart rate and contraction and it will help us in the diastole so again the case is that when diastole is achieved the cardiac muscles will receive the blood and the pain will be relieved and the next one is uh, the third one that is nitrate this is uh, not helping us in case of the uh, diastole but this is actually increasing the supply of the blood by mean of the dilating the blood vessels you know nitrates are well known by the term vasodilators these are dilating the blood vessels so again if you dilate the blood vessels you are supply allowing the blood to move to the specific part of the heart so when the blood is moving to the heart to a specific part of the heart so like this what will happen the blood is supplied the cardiac muscle if receives the blood so it receives the oxygen and the pain is again relieved we have the next one is known as sodium channel blockers sodium channel blockers play a very important role in case of the contraction of the ventricles and it is also playing somehow roles in other parts of the uh, heart also but it is more specifically studied in the case of contraction of the ventricles if you remember when we were studying the action potential of the cardiac myocytes so then the sodium was responsible to play a very important role in case of depolarization so now again if we are blocking the sodium channels we are delaying the depolarization so you can see in a nutshell again that we are actually getting the time for the diastole we are delaying the systole and diastole so if we get the time for the diastole cardiac muscles will receive the blood and like this what will happen if it is receiving the blood so it will receive the oxygen and the pain relieved and we have already discussed the drugs of the beta blockers like uh, metoprolol propranolol calcium channel blockers like uh, dihydropyridines non dihydropyridines these all are available in our uh, videos so you can search the mechanism of actions of these drugs uh, particularly in uh, different videos this was the general way of how these drugs are doing the action and uh, if you need uh, the examples of the drugs and etc so we have explained each and every mechanism 
in a separate video you can watch them separately by the way this is the way that they are doing the job on the heart and, uh, thank you for watching if you have any kind of query regarding this topic you can drop that in the comment box we'll come for the answers very soon thank you for watching